more than 2,000 years ago there was a man born contrary to the law of nature. He laid aside his purple robe for a peasant tunic. He was rich yet for our sake he became poor. This man lived in poverty and was raised in obscurity. He received no formal education and never possessed wealth or widespread influence. He never tra traveled extensively. He seldom crossed the boundary of his country in which he lived. But this man's life has changed the course of history. In infancy he startled a king. In childhood he amazed religious scholars. In manhood he ruled the course of nature, walked on stormy waves and hushed the raging sea to sleep. He healed multitudes without medicine and made no charge for his services. He never practiced psychiatry. Yes, yet he healed more broken hearts than all the doctors far and near. He never wrote a book, yet his life inspired more books than any other man. He never wrote a song, yet he has furnished the theme for more songs than all songwriters combined. He never found a college, yet all the schools put together cannot boast of having as many students. He never marshaled an army. He never drafted a soldier or fired a gun. Yet no leader ever had had more rebels surrender to him without a shot fired. Herod couldn't kill him. Satan couldn't seduce him. His enemies couldn't destroy him. The grave couldn't hold him. And after three days, he rose again and he's alive forevermore. That is my king. That is my savior. That is your savior. Can somebody say amen? He is ever perfect one. He is the Christ, the son of living God. This man stands forth upon the highest pinnacle of heavenly glory. Proclaimed by God, acknowledged by angels, adored by his people and feared by demons as he is risen Lord and Savior forevermore. Come on church, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ, the one that we love, the one that we worship and the one that we await, his second coming on this earth. This morning I just want to take a moment and talk a little bit about this resurrection, the event, the experience and the example. If you have a Bible we will go together to a Gospel of John chapter 11 verse 23 until verse 25. And there is a screen there that you can read. If you use Version Bible app right on the corner of your screen there is about three these dashes you click on the three dashes and you click on events and able location and you'll be able to follow the notes of this message right on your smartphone and make any adjustments if you choose to do so gospel of john chapter 11 verse 23 and down jesus said to her your brother will rise again martha said to him i know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day and Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Can somebody say amen? amen? He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Somebody say, I will live. I will live. I will live. I will live. Come on. See, Jesus is our resurrection. I'm going to share with you a few points. And this is just for, to help people write things down if they choose to or take pictures and post it for other people to write down. Resurrection is an event and this deals with the past. Resurrection is a fact of history and it, it has happened about 2,000 years ago. Many people debate whether resurrection happened or not. For us as Christians it's not just a theory. It's not because we believe in resurrection. Resurrection is a fact and it's proven by the empty tomb, by many witnesses. It's proven by the life change. It's proven by the prophecies in the Old Testament by Jesus' statement in the New Testament that he will rise again. But this resurrection is not just an event. It's the event our faith as followers of Jesus is based upon. Apostle Paul says that if Christ didn't rise, your faith is in vain. Your faith is based on the resurrection. When I was younger, you know, sometimes we were told things like our faith is based on the Bible. Now I'm going to correct that today. I believe in the, in the God's inspiring of the Bible, that God breathed in it. It's the Word of God. There's nothing that can be added and subtracted from it. It contains the revelation of God. But your faith isn't based on the book. It's based on the event. The resurrection resurrection was the only message disciples preached 
they didn't base their faith on the five books of Moses they based their faith on what they witnessed that happened in Jerusalem they saw Jesus die and they saw him rise from the dead now let's for a moment imagine I live you know we're a millennial generation most of us here today and the Bible gets criticized and comes under attack by a lot of professors by a lot of atheists or even agnostics or just by people doing a lot of googling or people reading things in the Old Testament that seem to you know contradict the culture today and we say you know the, the Bible is outdated I remember when I was about 21 years of age and I came under a huge attack of of the the stuff in the Bible I went to a Muslim Muslim mask mass uh, to the Muslim service and then they started to criticize the Bible right there some of their priests or some of their their people started to criticize the Bible and coming back home instead of reading the Bible I went on Google and I typed this, the inconsistencies in the Bible. Now you can find anything on Google. And I found a book written by a Muslim man that has 10,000 contradictions in the Bible. So here I am, a youth pastor, come upon a book that has 10,000 contradictions in the very book that my life is based upon. I quickly buy the book, download it, and I didn't get to the fifth page when my faith fell off the bottom. I called the pastor and I said, Pastor, I have from becoming a Christian turned to an agnostic. I'm not sure what I believe now. He says, that is great. And I said, what do you mean that is great? I am your youth pastor and I don't know if I believe in the Bible. He says, every single person has to have their faith tested because if it's not tested, it can be trusted. He says, go figure it out. So I went back to the same Google and typed 10,000 contradictions in the Bible cleared found somebody else wrote a book and clarified all of those contradictions but then I realized my faith is not based on the Bible even if the Bible would have mistakes even it doesn't but even if it would it doesn't change the fact Jesus rose from the dead I hold a birth certificate on this side it's the original birth certificate of mine and this is a translated birth certificate there's a seal there and everything now let's for a moment imagine this birth certificate holds an error in the place I lived would it change the reality that I was born now I trust this certificate it's a safe certificate this is important document in my life very important document but it only documents my birth the Bible documents the resurrection of Jesus but your faith is in the resurrection of Jesus and so your faith is anchored in his resurrection and even if people will debate and say well Bible is so irrelevant let's just for a moment agree with them and you'll say you know that doesn't change my faith because my faith is built in the event and he did rise again can somebody say amen let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ for his resurrection resurrection is an event B resurrection validated Jesus God by raising Jesus from the dead validated that Jesus was the Son of God it's interesting that when Pharisees would come to Jesus and say Jesus can you give us some of your tricks you know see they were not pleased with miracles they wanted something like super abnormal like somehow walking on water raising the dead cleansing the lepers didn't didn't touch them is that they really had a high appetite for supernatural and Jesus says the only sign God will give you to vindicate that I am the son of God is the sign of Jonah and he said as the Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and then he came out so will the son of man be in the heart of the earth and after three days he will rise again God's sign to the world that Jesus is not just the son of a carpenter or the prophet like the Muslims say or a good teachers like other religions say God's proof that Jesus is who he said he is is raising him from the dead if you ever doubt or you may say what makes him so significant what makes him so special I mean I know he's a nice guy Jesus is either a liar a lunatic or Lord he can't be a nice guy nice guys don't walk around say I'm God and nice guys don't get crucified for what they said and what they did nice guys don't walk on water and nice guys don't put sea to sleep he's either a liar a lunatic or Lord and God raised him from the dead to make it easier for us to believe 
that he is who he said he is. Can somebody say amen? amen. Number three, under the resurrection is an event. Is his resurrection is my justification. So not only Jesus rose again and that is foundation for my faith. Not only Jesus rose again and that confirms to me he is the son of God. But in the scriptures it explicitly says in Romans chapter 4 verse 25 it says that Jesus he died for our forgiveness of sins but he rose again that we will be justified. Now for those of us in here today who are not extremely theologically versed in word justified, I like word justified and the way I break it down to my simple English is just as though I have never done anything wrong. That's just my definition of it. Justification, it's a, it's a court term. It's when you are declared legally cleared of all the offenses that you have committed. My friends that's a little bit more than just being forgiven of your sin. Being justified means you've never done it. So Jesus rises from the dead not only to forgive you of your sin but to wipe the memory of it in your own consciousness and to wipe that sin out of his own records. So when he looks at you, he doesn't remember, he chooses not to remember and not, he doesn't see that sin. That's why he is nice and kind to you because he doesn't know what you are feeling guilty about. And that gives you the power to tell your own consciousness, say, hey, listen, I know I've done that, but if God has forgiven me, see, if that would have ended with the cross, you could still bear the guilt and the memory of your past. But because it didn't end with the cross, three days, day, three days later, he rose from the dead so that you can have the power to educate your consciousness that say, listen, whatever happened three days ago, six years ago, did not happen. And we said that is a ridiculous way to live. The best way to live. Because condemnation sometimes is more powerful than the very sin we committed. A lot of us uh, Slavic people or immigrants drive vehicles that have salvage titles. So if any of us are selling a car to you, make sure you check the title. <laughs> American people, they, they like clean titles. We just like nice cars. <laughs> Whatever title it has, we don't care. But every time you have a car with a salvage title, there's just one problem with that. Well, there's many problems with it, but one big problem is that typically you won't know if the car has a salvage title or not based on looking at it because it gets fixed. But the title reduces the value of the car. You can't sell the car with a unclean title. Many banks won't give you the loan for the car and many people when they receive forgiveness it's kind of like your life gets fixed but because you don't receive justification you still carry on the glove box of your mind that you are salvaged, rebuilt or restored. My Bible makes me to understand those who are in Christ are new creation not a rebuilt title not a salvage title you are a new creation can somebody say amen you see apostle paul was writing to corinthians and he said to them he said you guys were fornicators adulterers adulterers homosexuals sodomites thieves covetous and drunkens revivalists and extortionists he's saying all of these things that they did and then in second corinthians 11 2 he says this that i may present you as a chaste virgins to christ Imagine people who were extortioners, homosexuals, adulterers, idolaters, who did all of these things and Paul is saying, but I will present you to Christ as chaste virgin. See, Christ isn't just forgiving my sin. He wipes my past away through his resurrection and gives me a clean title. I become a virgin to him. <laughs> Guys, this is a very powerful message. This is a very powerful message to any of us in here today who've done things that we're not proud of. 
things that are maybe still in the DMV records, things maybe that are still in the court system or things that are still in the memories of other people. I'm not saying that receiving this will cause everyone to forget what you've done but it helps you to forget what you've done and God says I choose to forget what you've done and this is what I know about life. Your vibe attracts your tribe. If you're living with guilt and shame people will think of guilt and shame about you if you get free from that it's a matter of time and people around you they'll know the facts but those facts will not affect their behavior toward you when it concerns your past the only person who will remind you of your past is the devil that is the only information he has about you he is clueless about your future and he is clueless about what God wants to do in your present and when he comes in and reminds you of your past listen tell him that his future is worse than your past tell him what he is going is so much hotter than where you're coming from and I know this is a cute cliche and I know this is a nice thing to say and you've heard it before but I mean seriously your past shouldn't have any power over you because Jesus rose from the dead not only to make me forgiven but to make me just you have to tell yourself why you have to tell yourself because your consciousness judges you your consciousness is the judge. Your consciousness doesn't know about the Savior until you tell it. Your consciousness doesn't know about the blood that forgives you until you teach it. Your consciousness isn't born again. Your consciousness must be taught the Word of God. You must sit to your consciousness and say, listen, you know what I've done. You've seen it, you've done it. But you haven't been alive long enough because 2,000 years ago, there was someone else who's done something else to cover that up. So listen, consciousness, you can't bring that up. Stop it. The only thing I want you to bring up is what he did on the cross because that is more powerful than what I did. Because many of us, we're the worst critics of ourselves. Many of us, it's not the devil that's against us, it's we that are against us. And if you're against yourself, you can't be for other people. God isn't against you. Through the resurrection, he says, I have justified you. Any justified people we have in this house this morning? Come on. Anybody happy and glad that God has made you just? Because gosh, if he would judge me according to my sin, I wouldn't be in Denton County Jail. I'll be buried six feet under. If I would have to live with that guilt and shame, my life would be over. So the first thing is that resurrection is an event. It deals with my past. Number two is the resurrection is an example. It deals with my future. What I mean by an example? A resurrection of Jesus, a is the guarantee of our resurrection according to first corinthians chapter 15 verse 22 it says that christ rose first and then we who are right after him will rise also and then the rest of the world now it's important to see this is that jesus is the head anytime a baby is born you know when the head comes out of the womb we know the body will follow jesus rose from the dead you will also rise from the dead now the uncomforting thought also is not only Christians will be raised from the dead. Everyone will rise from the dead. The Bible says some unto life and some unto, unto condemnation. And so the idea that only you or I get raised from the dead is not true. Everyone will rise from the dead. When you and I rise from the dead as followers of Jesus, we will not only be like Christ, but we will have bodies as, as His. In the scriptures it says, also in chapter 15 that our bodies will no longer be corruptible but incorruptible. They will no longer be mortal but they will be immortal. They will no longer be in dishonor but they will be in glory. They will no longer be in weakness but they will be in power. And they will no longer be soulish means wanting to do things that are not good but they will be spiritual. In other words, you're gonna have an awesome body. You won't you know, need to drink a lot of water and then wait to go to the restroom. You won't work hard and then sweat. You know, all of these dysfunctions that come into our body, most of our bodies are like PC computers. Gets always attacked with these viruses. But you're gonna get a Mac. No virus can come and touch you. <laughs> it's gonna be virus free. But it will live forever because Macs die after two years. But your body will live on and on and on and on. I mean imagine that. No doctor appointments. No, imagine that your teeth not hurting, your spine not hurting, no problems you know in your joints. I mean imagine eating whatever you want to do and never gaining weight. I think that is enough to receive Jesus as the Savior on my soul. For some of us in here. <laughs> you like this whole eternal life? Not sure but that 
I'll take this any time of the day. What is the point that I'm saying is that resurrection of Jesus guarantees my resurrection. This gives me hope for the future. What is the hope for the future? Uh, well, there's only one sad part about resurrection, your resurrection, is you're going to have to die. <laughs> you can't rise from the dead if you don't die first. And, but you don't have to worry about that. It's going to happen. 10 out of 10 people will die. That's what the statistic says. That includes you, me, and I. Alexander the Great, uh, the, the smartest people, uh, Einstein, the craziest people, the most powerful, the richest people, every single person, nobody could trick death and you and I will die and that's not something to be afraid of. It's something to live in hope that death and the funeral is not the end. While we are happy, while we are looking forward to awesome things in life, I do want to solemnly remind you that your life on this earth has an expiration. During the baptism, when we had a baptism class and I showed to the, I have a hundred boxes for the leaders spaces in my office. And as we were talking during baptism to our people who are getting baptized, I showed them how many boxes that these boxes represent all the summers I will have on this earth because I believe I'll live a hundred years. And so, and I said that first three rows are already done. You're looking at the rest of my life which has not too many rows and I said every single summer you're about 50 60 some of us 40 summers away from having your last summer just as I'm driving from Missouri uh, we saw a, a friend of mine saw a nice Mercedes two people driving under business enjoying their life something happened where they did brakes didn't work or they didn't notice something and next thing you know that SUV Mercedes goes into a semi and semi wipes completely the roof and both people are declared dead. Life is very short and heaven isn't something you should think about during funerals. You should think about it every single day. The more heavenly minded you become, easier it is to handle the troubles of life today. The IRS, the tickets, the children, the taxes, your weight all of these things they become so much easier to deal with when you realize you will be gone see heaven mindness living with heaven in mind isn't making us an escapism it gives us strength to go through whatever we go through for those of us who ever planned you know on some kind of a vacation you know what they say on friday your happiness increases by 10 percent why because the weekend did you know that on monday 10% more likely people are commit suicide on Mondays. Why? Because it's Monday. On Friday, your happiness goes through the roof. Why? Because you know the end has come. It could be the same hard day as every other day. But because of that anticipation of the weekend, it raises your boss is nicer everybody seems to be nicer why because your perspective changes God didn't just give you heaven as a spare tire to pull it out on the day of your funeral he give you and let it be an engine let it something that keeps you pumping every day whatever you go through that you remember this is not gonna be like this all the time you're gonna leave this is a hotel not a home how many of you know when you go into your hotel you don't bring all of your clothes you don't settle there. Why? Because you're going to be there for a week, two months, a year. But that is not your pillow. That is not your favorite restroom. And that is not your kitchen. That microwave is not the one like in your home. This is a hotel. Heaven is your home. Can somebody say amen? Our life on this earth is like this. Looks like red to you. What color is this? orange this section is kind of like your life on this earth this is the rest of your life that you're going to be still living forever and ever and this goes all the way around the globe non-stop just joking it ends over there <laughs> this is the life that you're living on earth right now this part is when you were in your diapers then you learned how to walk then you quickly got your license then you graduated from school then you got married then your metabolism slowed down so you started to watch your weight <laughs> then you finished school 
then you finally paid off your debts you got the kids on the way you got the house and then you were really really looking forward to to save up as much money as you can so you can enjoy these last few little stripes over here so you could really travel so all of your life in here was focused on these small little things that you had no control over how long they're gonna last and then you came here your hair started falling out your retirement you are retired you're finally enjoying your life and it ends here but it doesn't end it's only on this earth that this orange stripe ends your life will continue and continue and continue and continue anyone who say that I am stupid because I generously give to God's kingdom I will say it's not I who is foolish who lives for the world that doesn't end it is you who is foolish my friend who only lives for the world that is marked by an orange tape don't live for the world that you are in today because it will end this is a hotel not your home for those of you today who do not know where your home is or maybe your relationship with God is not what it's supposed to be I want to tell you something scripture says God placed eternity in your heart you will live forever you're not your life doesn't end with death and if it does I think you already ponder the question is there more to life than this there is Jesus wouldn't rise from the dead if your life would end with the funeral your life continues the question is where will it continue what are you doing today to prepare for eternity please don't sweat over your retirement don't sweat over your how much you will receive from social security don't sweat even over your weight when you die and you realize how good heaven is you would have wished it went there earlier we exercise take vitamins do whatever we can just to extend this orange mark just few little bit more but no matter how and when our life ends on this earth my friends your life doesn't really end it's just on this earth maybe you had somebody who passed away in just last few weeks or something I want to tell you something it's just their orange tape that ended it wasn't the rope that ended come on somebody amen resurrection gives me hope for the future let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ and thirdly resurrection is an experience resurrection is an experience the verse that we read today Jesus said that I am resurrection and life Jesus comes to the Lazarus tomb and Lazarus died and Martha tells Jesus that she is believing that he will rise again in the future so Martha had hope for the future and Jesus says I want you to bring me to his excuse me bring me to his tomb and she's saying why maybe you want to cry there and so they're going up there and then as they came to the tomb Jesus says remove the stone and Martha says you can't remove the stone he already stinks and Jesus says didn't I tell you that he who believes in me will see the glory of God see resurrection is not just something that happened in the past resurrection is not just something that's going to happen to you and I in the future Jesus says resurrection is not an event or a doctrine he says resurrection is a person and that person is me resurrection is Jesus and Jesus didn't tell Martha Martha I will raise your brother from the dead after long from now he says I'm gonna raise your brother from the dead right now why because that is what I do Jesus ruined every funeral including his own every funeral he went in stuff happened Jesus why because he's resurrection and he's not just raising people physically from the dead but he comes into your life today not just to give you hope for the future and to give you freedom from your past he comes into your life and you and I have our own Lazaruses that we have buried or our own Lazaruses that have died and some of those are no longer dead they stink and we've learned to cope with that stuff some of us we've turned our issues into an identity because we've been so tired fighting it and we just said this is just who I am and Jesus comes to that and he says listen I want to show my glory see you don't have to die to experience resurrection you have to believe to experience resurrection and I'm not talking about one day I'm talking about today not someday I'm talking about today when there is pain in your body or certain parts of your body are giving out 
Jesus is coming in today to my tomb, your tomb and he says I will rise you one day. Well listen I am the resurrection right now. I want to bring that power into your life today. I want to restore your marriage today. I want to restore your health today. I want to take your crazy children out of their craziness and give them sanity and blessing today. Jesus is coming into your situation and the Bible says this, the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead, who raised Christ from the dead, lives inside of us to give life to our mortal bodies. It's interesting, the Bible doesn't say the spirit lives in us to turn our mortal bodies into immortal bodies. He's saying one day he'll change our bodies but as of right now he wants to infuse them with resurrection life and give life to our mortal bodies so that our bodies reflect not the culture we live in, not the viruses that we have, not the generational things where there is constant sickness but reflect the Spirit of God who infuses our bodies with in supernatural strength. Come on somebody, amen. If Lilia can give me the water, my sister if you can give me the water. Thank you. Being a tea lover and ever since I got married I became also in love with coffee. I want to just share with you at the end how to experience resurrection life in your own life. Uh, one of my, uh, one of our friends gave me this as a gift. It's a tea. Yeah, I want you to smell it. How does it smell? Like flowers. It smells good? Yes. I just wanted to, so you guys don't think it's, it's some kind of a wooden piece. This stuff smells really, really good. I heard it's very expensive. It's one thing, but it's not meant to wet your smell or touch your smell. The beauty of this is designed to really show its glory not to the human just nose but in a particular environment see God comes into your life and you can smell him but you can really know him when you invite him into some hot issues of your life when you allow him to go inside kind of like Jesus says to Martha and Mary can I go inside of that tomb but Jesus that is hot Jesus the doctors have done their best Jesus there's nothing we can do Jesus says I know I want to show my glory and I can't show my glory if you don't put me in hot water I can't show healing if you don't let me into the sickness I can't show restoration if you don't let me in into some messy situation in your marriage I can't show redemption if you don't put me in a situation that requires redeeming Jesus' glory is revealed when you invite him into some compromising, contradictory, complicated, confusing, messy situations of your life. And don't worry, it's not going to mess him up because this tea begins to blossom in the hot water. And if you begin to drink it, you will recognize the taste and the color is now affected by this little ball that I just threw in. If you invite Jesus into your situation, you will see His glory. His glory to heal. It is His glory to save. It is His glory to stop the nightmares. It is His glory to remove those challenges in your life. Can somebody say Amen? amen. I want you to in conclusion just write this down on how to experience the resurrection power. And I just mentioned the first one. Make room for the supernatural. Make room for the supernatural. Remove every obstacle in your mind to Jesus. And I understand somebody is listening today and saying, Vlad, I tried this. I believed for healing. Nothing happened. So I put a blockage now. Anytime you mention the word healing, that's not for me because I've tried this. Paul said, I know whom I believed. Don't believe in healing. Believe in a healer. Healing can fail. Healer will never fail you. I'm not talking about believing for your freedom. I'm talking about believing in your deliverer because he will never fail you. 
healing deliverance these things can fail you but Jesus will never fail you and you make room for him you may say but I believe but I've prayed but this is, has happened today I just want to ask you allow him for his glory to manifest in your life by making room maybe some traditions or certain words have been spoken over your life that caused you to close down from believing in God to do the impossible in your life open that up maybe some situations they stink or they're just so complicated they're so confusing Jesus knows how to handle it number two thank him pan praise don't panic when Jesus faced the dead Lazarus and the tomb the first thing that Jesus did it, he wouldn't pray he said father I thank you that you have heard me and I'm saying this so that other people will know that you sent me he wasn't sweating he didn't see Jesus going into panic mode I mean this is a serious thing this is not somebody having a flu or stomach problem the guy is dead and he's been dead for three days after 10 minutes when you're dead your brain begins to go not for you even if you come back after 10 15 minutes you can have a brain damage this guy's been dead for three days not only his dad's brain is damaged this guy's completely damaged and Jesus is not panicking he's standing in front of a dead situation and he says father I thank you really anything else Jesus see many of us thank God on the wrong side of the fence when Lazarus rises from the dead this is where we go into Thanksgiving but real faith looks at the dead situation and begins to thank God not for the situation but in the situation and I know I'm just like you we said thank God for what my life isn't good that's why the psalmist says thank him and say you are good your mercy is everlasting and your truth endures to all generation the reason you can thank God in the midst of every situation is that you don't thank God because this situation is good you thank God because God is good his mercy is everlasting that means this problem will not last forever Jesus lasts forever and the truth endures to all generation that means what God says is the truth what you feel is true what God says is the truth and the truth always trumps what is true you thank him anytime you panic you destroy your faith anytime you lose it and you start going and, and just bawling you lose your faith now you feel better it's like throwing up you always feel better after throwing up but it makes everyone around you sick God doesn't want you to address your issue with panic address it with praise you had a hard day and you come to church you said I can't praise no you can't not praise because you don't know how that praise strengthens your faith and it begins to disarm the enemy for the glory of God can somebody say amen Jesus praises God and after he praises God his faith now is released and number three what he does is he proclaims instead of complaining he doesn't ask God why did you allow this to happen he speaks to the dead bones and he says Lazarus come out you don't see him praying many of us need to pray less praise more and proclaim more prayer that just you just vomit how you feel is good what's better is when you praise proclaim who God is and then speak into your situation the words of life you speak into your marriage the words of life you speak into your body the words of life scripture says let the weak say I am strong let the poor say not I am broke not I got fired laid off but I am blessed by God and I speak into your situation today to be healed in Jesus name if you are sick in your body right now where you are sitting not just when we're gonna pray but right now as you're sitting at the Holy Spirit's power that is not limited by space and time even if you're watching a live stream the life supernatural resurrection power will come into your tomb maybe there's problems in your joints I speak life to that problem right now in Jesus name if there is problem in your blood or irregular heartbeat I speak life to your heart in Jesus name maybe you're struggling with depression or there's com uh, mechanic, uh, chemical problems that are in, in your brain I speak life in Jesus mighty name amen maybe you have thyroid Jesus's power is greater than thyroid and I speak life to your thyroid in Jesus name 
I speak resurrection into your tyrant in Jesus name. Maybe you came here today and there's challenges in your finances. God who supplies all of our needs according to his riches and his glory. I speak that he will bring prosperity and provision to you. Not tomorrow but today in Jesus name. Just receive that right now wherever you are sitting in Jesus name. Holy Spirit I thank you. I thank you that you are bringing life right now to every single person because today it is resurrection day. Today is the day for healing and today is the day for resurrection. Can somebody say amen? Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.